House of the Dragon season two is over. I thought I was going to be very sad. You know, when your favorite show ends or your favorite, you finish your favorite book series, you're like, oh man, it's sad that it's over. I was preparing myself for this emotion, but I'm actually not that sad that it's over. I think it was mainly because overall this season felt like there wasn't too much that happened. It was all set up, set up for the future seasons that's not going to come out for another two years. I don't like how these House of the Dragons seasons come out so far apart. I don't know if this season is going to really hold me over. It felt like wherever we ended at season one, the war was apparently officially starting. We're kind of in the same position now after season two. Things happened with the characters and then everyone was kind of settling into their places on the chessboard. All the pieces are, are laid out. Obviously, there's going to be spoilers in this video. I'm going to be spoiling season two. I don't remember every single detail because it's been a while. It's been two months, but I'll start from the beginning and then work my way to the finale that I just finished watching. I think it started off pretty strong. We were getting back into it. Lucera's had just died. Rhaenyra was a grieving mother. She wanted Aemon. Blood and cheese. Jaehaerys's death. Aegon being very mad, obviously, and hanging all the rat catchers. After maybe the first two episodes, we kind of forgot about Jaehaerys. It felt like it didn't really have a lasting effect. Really disliked Kristen Cole. I think everyone hated him. Was expecting to hate him more as the season went on, but I feel like after episode four, when he finally saw with his own eyes the Dance of the Dragons, I don't know, he sort of fell into a kind of shock. Now at least he understands what he set into motion. I think the peak of my hatred for him happened during that scene where he sends Sir Eric to assassinate Rhaenyra by pretending to be his twin and causing that very sad duel and death of both of the twins. That was all Kristen Cole. After the first half of this season, I feel like I just kind of forgot about him. I mean, I don't even remember what he was doing. He was marching. He was with Gwen, Allison's brother. They were doing stuff on the field. <laughs> At first, I didn't like Aegon, but I think I felt kind of bad for him after what happened. Got rid of Otto Hightower and then made Kristen Cole the hand. And then when Kristen started scheming with Aemon behind Aegon's back, then everything kind of just went wrong for Aegon. I really did like Aemon in this season, though. He was like the Daemon of season two. Like, Daemon was Daemon in season one. This season, I feel like Aemon sort of took that spotlight. And he was really just that character where you're like, he's evil, he's ruthless, but he knows how how to get what he wants and he's not afraid to go after it. The way that he sort of got back at Aegon was very evil but it was impressive. Like especially that scene at the table at the council where he started speaking in High Valerian. Oldly non gieri, Jumbi. A very memorable scene. And then his mom too. Allison to being there and actually rubbing salt on a wound, which then caused him to make a reckless decision and fly into battle with Sunfire inexperienced, unprepared. It was cool to see the dragons and their interactions with their riders. And I feel like they did a good job showing like sort of the emotions or the personalities of the dragons in little sub subtle ways. But then obviously they did it right before the dance. And then it made me feel so bad for the dragons, especially I'm sure they don't want to fight each other. It's so painful to see them in pain. They're injured, they're in pain, and yet they still try to their best to protect their riders. And I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> the dragons. The whole Aemon just knowing that he was gonna burn Aegon, seriously injure Aegon, or even like kill him. He still did it, so now you know. Now you know. Now we know Aemon's true intentions. He really is ruthless and he doesn't care. I feel like they tried to draw a lot of parallels between Daemon and Aemon, but at the end of the day, at least Damon wouldn't have done what Aemon did in the same position because I feel like Damon at least tries to support his family and is, he has some boundaries. I feel like Aemon is just, Aemon will do anything. And then the whole Maylise, ah, oh, Rhaenys dying, that was, I'm really gonna miss Rhaenys. She was great in this season. She was like a guiding figure for Rhaenyra, really supporting her on the council. And obviously Maylise dying too. That was so... That was sad, but at the same time, I'm like, really? Did they really have to go that way? How did Vagar just sneak up on them? That was so crazy. That was crazy. Vagar is huge. How does she just 
pop out of nowhere and just it really does make you realize how wasteful this whole targaryen civil war dance of the dragons is i mean we all know okay this is spoilers but we all know that this causes the death of so many dragons and i think this show is trying to make us feel like you know there's no choice like they have to fight because of these misunderstandings this fight for power i just feel very bad for the dragons and then corliss i feel like they could have done a bit more with corliss he was kind of mad kind of sad kind of mad that Rainey's died obviously but he didn't really do much beyond just grieve a bit but I think it made him realize that now that he's lost so many of his family members he's now kind of realizing that maybe his two bastard kids are the way to go because <laughs> that's all he has left and it really sets the stage for that and I loved Bela's speech about Rhaenys and that really was the deciding factor for Corliss to become Rhaenyra's hand he even offered to pass down Driftmark to her but she's like I'm fire and blood Driftmark belongs to salt and sea just Ceres was also a, more of a key figure in this now Rhaenyra finally told him the song of ice and fire and it feels very special when they pass down this whole story and it's like only Targaryen rulers know about this story but I'm like why do we have to keep this as a secret can't we just tell people because I feel like if it was a more well-known established thing they wouldn't have all these misunderstandings would they I don't know Rhaenyra literally just goes to King's Landing to secretly meet with Alicent this is before the battle at Rook's Rest this whole season Rhaenyra is just sitting around trying to prevent the war queen in the beginning she's a grieving mother and she's not really doing her duties as queen because she's grieving over Lucerus' death, which is understandable for a period of time. But I'm like, at the end of the day, she's still the queen. She's the leader. She needs to make decisions. She needs to do stuff. But this whole season, it just felt like she didn't do much. She was just kind of complaining, being indecisive, trying to prevent a war that technically already started at the end of last season. I thought she was going to progress as a character and she was going to finally like come to some sort of conclusion. But it almost felt like she never really did or she's always kind of at the same spot. She's like going back and forth. I understand we're already at war. I have to fight for my place on the throne. I have to do something to prevent the bloodshed. But then she's also like trying not to fight because she doesn't want bloodshed. And she keeps thinking she has like some other option. She's trying to exhaust all of her options. So she goes to visit Alicent. And then they have this conversation. Rhaenyra realizes that Alicent mistakenly thought when Viserys said Aegon on his deathbed, he meant her son, Aegon II. But it was actually Aegon the Conqueror's dream a song of ice and fire if it wasn't a secret then there wouldn't have been this misunderstanding but you know it was a secret it still is kind of a secret the war has started and then Rhaenyra is still trying to be like can't we do something to prevent it now that you know that you misunderstood and Aegon is not supposed to be on the throne right now and then Allison's like what do you want me to do like there's nothing it's already it's already started so yeah and then she goes back and she's like yep okay we can't we can't prevent the war let's do something so I thought they were gonna do something rook's rest happened and i thought that was like i thought we were gonna go uphill from there but then it kind of just plateaued again and it plateaued for up until the very end and damon damon this whole time after he fights with rhaenyra after she's mad because he sent blood and cheese to kind of assassinate aemon but then they ended up killing jaharis because they couldn't find aemon making her look bad because everyone thought she was the one that ordered the death they get into a fight and then rhaenyra's like you're never gonna accept me as your queen and then he just goes to Harrenhal and then he's just stuck at Harrenhal for like the rest of the season he's just there and he's having all these random visions every episode we see Damon he's like having a vision sleepwalking dreaming getting poisoned by Alice Rivers I don't know I guess we learn about him okay I guess the good thing is we kind of see his his inner thoughts and his regrets we get to see young Rhaenyra from last season and Viserys that was all good but then it keeps happening over and over that one scene with his mother was a little bit unnecessary I feel I, I still don't understand why that needed to be there he gave off very strong vibes that he was going to betray Rhaenyra and he was going to try to become king <laughs> 
Dang it, Damon. You were like my favorite character in season one. And this season, you're kind of just like, I don't know what you're off doing, but I hope you don't betray Rhaenyra. I just feel like, quite frankly, she is not really fit to be queen. Coming into the season, I was I was team black. I mean, I, I guess I still am team black. The show writers seem very team black biased. The more I watch them try to make Rhaenyra this sort of kind queen that doesn't want bloodshed, that cares about the small folk because we see Aemon doesn't. He doesn't give a crap about the small folk. He's just like, I'm feeding my dragon. I'm winning this war. The small folk, you guys can deal with your own problems. Don't come to me even though I'm your king. Rhaenyra cares and she's actually trying to be somewhat strategic. She's trying to make the best decision she can, but it feels like she's not very good at making decisions. She's not prepared for the role. Also, when she was young, she never wanted to be queen. She never prepared herself to take on the responsibility of sitting the Iron Throne. And now she's complaining that people don't respect her or people don't put their trust in her. Rhaenyra, you kind of have to earn that though. You haven't really done anything to earn any of this. And then she's complaining about not having that. I don't know how I feel about Rhaenyra. I mean, I don't dislike her because she hasn't really done anything bad, but she just seems a little bit incompetent at times. And also maybe they just made her too nice. This whole season, it felt like it was kind of trying to focus very hard on Allison and Rhaenyra's relationship. Allison was also facing a lot of regret in this season too. I mean, she's realizing that everything is coming crashing down on her, regretting the way she raised her kids or what she has done with her life. And she's actually changing more as a person than I feel Rhaenyra is. So there was much more going on on Team Green's side. The characters developed way more over there, whereas Team Black felt kind of stagnant with Damon and Harrenhal. And then Rhaenyra just sulking all day long, not knowing what to do. Episode 7 with the dragon seat. It was kind of interesting to see. It felt kind of like it happened quite fast when they just gathered all the bastards. They invited all the bastards from King's Landing to come to Dragonstone. Rhaenyra just puts them before Vermithor. A lot of them just die. All of these new dragon riders were always on Team Black. Like they were always loyal to Rhaenyra. I feel like things could have gotten messy if some of them were actually on Team Green. Like that would have been interesting. Now Rhaenyra has has seven dragons, depending on Damon. Okay, well, now we know. Now we know by the end that Damon is still loyal to Rhaenyra. After all that stumbling around in Hall, he finally touches the weirwood tree and then has this whole vision, this whole vision of this entire timeline, the distant future. We see scenes from Game of Thrones, the Night King, the Night King in which Arya was like, I feel like maybe I shouldn't have watched Game of Thrones before this. I feel like I would have been more hyped about the Song of Ice and Fire, but now that I know what happens, it's kind of like, oh, right that Night King. But yeah, he sees the Night King. He sees Danny and her dragons. I'm just a player in this game. I'm just a part of this story and I just have to play my role. So everything that happened in Heron Hall, where it felt like he was going to betray Rhaenyra at the end, he bends the knee. It kind of felt like it was just like a 180 shift, but I don't know. Maybe the vision really does have that big of an impact on him. I squealed like a fangirl when he bent the knee to Rhaenyra. I thought that was a cute moment. I was like, yes, we're back. We're back. We're, we're like season one Damon where he's like oh he really cares about Rhaenyra they're kind of all lovey-dovey okay there was no lovey-dovey but I kind of felt that spark again now team black has the upper hand now it just feels like it should be so easy it's her time to attack and then Allison comes to Dragonstone secretly to chat with Rhaenyra. Why is she here? She literally, Rhaenyra already came to visit you and she was already like, there's nothing we can do. But now that Rhaenyra has the upper hand, she's like, oh, you know, Rhaenyra, I, I realized that I made some bad decisions in my life. I know now that I don't really care about power or the crown or whatever. And I just want to take my daughter, Helena, and I just want to like run away somewhere. Actually, I don't, I don't know what she said but I'm just like, dang girl, what are you doing? What do you expect Rhaenyra to do at this point? It was just a really weird, it was a really weird scene. And then Rhaenyra is like, you know, son for a son, I have to kill Aegon. I have to kill Aegon. And then Alicent sort of kind of agrees to it. I guess she's also probably thinking in the back of subconsciously thinking, you know, Aegon's already crippled. He's like begging for death. He's in so much pain. He's been begging for death. You might as well put him out of his misery. If that ends the fighting, then yeah, it's a good, it's a good trade-off. 
have. I mean, I don't know why they called it a son for a son, because I'm like, that was the first episode, and we already- Jaharis already died over that, so I'm like, did his death mean nothing, I guess? I guess the grandson, but still. I don't think that part was written out very well. It didn't make too much sense. It just felt like maybe they were just throwing in there to catch us all off guard. While Danny kind of forgot about the Iron Fleet. I thought they were gonna end on a really- cliffhangery bang just like season one with Lucerus. it sets up a lot for season three but it's weird to have a show just be fully set up and then there's also a season four so i'm like it's gonna be weird if season three is also another setup season i wait two years for another setup season i'm assuming stuff will happen at least at heron hall next season but yeah anyways that's all i had to say about house of the dragon season two i liked it still i don't know if i just like it because I'm biased and I'm like, I like House of the Dragon. I don't know. I don't really care what they do. I'm just going to watch it.